as the MLB regular season closes in on the finish line, let's take a look back at some of the players and the teams that fell well short of their expectations and left the stink of disappointment all over 2024. First up, it's Bo Bichette. The Blue Jays were counting on Bo to be a threat towards the top of that lineup in 2024, and he couldn't have been farther from it. A lingering calf injury derailed much of the season, but even when he was on the field, Jays fans didn't see the Bo Bichette they were used to. Assistant near 300 hitter was struggling to hit above 200, and the power was gone. You take his impact bat away, and it's enough to cost the Jays four to five wins. He'll enter the final year of his contract in 2025, and it's not a guarantee it'll be in a Blue Jays uniform. Next up, it's Julio Rodriguez. This is bad, and it all boils down to swinging and missing, chasing out of the zone, and striking out way too much. 32 homers last year. He won't sniff 20 this year. And this will be the third year of a downward trend for his slugging and OPS. There absolutely no doubt about it needs to be a course correction with his plate approach or we're in store for more inconsistency in the years to come. Next up, it's Austin Riley. The Atlanta Braves used the long ball to their advantage in 2023. Oh But in 2024, they experienced a power outage of sorts. And Austin Riley is one of the players at the center of it. After averaging 36 home runs over the last three seasons, he never got his bat going in 2024. Now, his regular season came to an early end on August 8th after being hit by a pitch on his wrist. And at the time, though, he had 19 home runs. Only 19. Austin Riley is not solely to blame for the drop in home runs. Acuna and Albies went down with injuries. Matt Olson's power is down. Something else Braves fans are disappointed about. And Sean Murphy looks like a shell of himself. Next up, it's Glaber Torres. Yankee fans are done with the soft hitting, poor fielding Glaber. His hard hit rate and barrel rate are well below league average, so his homers and slugging are way down. He's striking out at an incredible rate, especially for a guy that is one of the better chase rates in the league. And his defense, is just not good. He's a negative outs above average guy and has committed the most fielding errors and the second most throwing errors at second base this season. He's a free agent after 2024 and likely a goner. Next up, Jordan Montgomery. After the long drawn out offseason process and firing his agent, Scott Boris, Jordan Montgomery has had a nightmare of a 2024 year. On top of all the off-the-field stuff, his on-the-field performance has been as bad as we've ever seen from him. His walk rate is way up. His strikeout rate is way down. He's lost velocity on his fastball, and on top of that, lost his spot in the Diamondbacks rotation. Next up, it's Bobby Miller. Miller went from one of the next aces in this Dodgers rotation to just trying to remain at the major league level, which he wasn't able to do for a time in 2024. While he's been up, he's been a walk machine. And when he's throwing strikes, he's getting crushed. Both his walk rate and barrel rate are in the bottom 10% of the league. You can not pitch like that. With the current personnel and the aggressive talent acquisition approach of this front office, his future with the Dodgers is no longer certain. Next up, it's Clay Holmes. If the Yankees end up losing the American League East to the Orioles by a game or two, Clay Holmes is going to get a lot of the blame. At the moment of recording, he has blown 12 saves, 11 in actual save opportunities. And I bring up the number because that could continue to rise. By the time you see this, he could be at 13 or 14 or 15. He's worn five losses on his record, but he's also contributed to four more losses as a result of the blown saves with the slider 
and a sweeper staying in the zone more this year is having a negative impact on his sinker which is getting hit more david bednar is next he's one of the most dominant closers over the last couple of seasons but he's really struggled in 2024 trevor may did a great breakdown contributing it to how his fastball and curveball tunnel or more appropriately this year haven't tunneled in 2024 as well as some pitch tipping in the end his k rate has dropped his walk rate has risen and his era is through the roof as the pirates consider 2025 and their prospects to contend you have to wonder if they feel comfortable with david bednar coming out of the pen for that team in 2025 let's transition to some teams that have disappointed and we'll start with the toronto blue jays this organization supposed to be in the middle of a window to contend for a world series championship but in 2024 they are going to finish well below 500 the offseason acquisitions didn't pay off and far too many of the existing talented players on the roster have struggled in 2024 George Springer has regressed. Bo Bichette had one of the worst seasons of his career. Davis Schneider isn't Babe Ruth. And I could go on and on. You get the point. Now the Jays are at a crossroads. This offseason will be all about making decisions that impact the next five years of the team and deciding who will be a part of that future. The Rangers are next. The 2023 World Series champs never really looked like reigning champions at all in 2024. And that's a bad thing for baseball. They entered the season with a skeleton crew of a rotation, counting on the returns of ailing pitchers Max Scherzer, Tyler Molly, and Jacob DeGrom. But that turned out to be a mistake. Max didn't debut until June and was back on the IL by the end of July. Tyler Molly was good for three starts in August until... His shoulder stiffened up, and Jacob DeGrom didn't return until it was too late and the season was all but over. Bullpen was shaky most of the season, and nearly every hitter took a step backwards from their 2023 seasons. This was pretty much the worst-case scenario for the Texas Rangers 2024 season outlook, and it all came true to form. The Mariners are next, and this team has the rotation to go out there and win a World Series. The problem is they have a lineup. They have an offense that is one of the worst in baseball. Now, as of recording, the season is not over. They're still in striking distance of the Astros for the AL West crown, but there lies more disappointment. The Mariners held a 10-game lead back on June 20th, and that disappeared in no time. They strike out too much, most in baseball, which contributes to their league-worst team batting average. Yeah, less hits than the Chicago White Sox. If this team didn't have elite pitching, they'd be 20 games under 500. The Cardinals are next. Now, for some reason, there was belief in this Cardinal season that they could compete and even win the Central. They were the favorites. To those who bought in, this was a massively disappointing season and could, maybe should, cost Oliver Marmel his job. How many more years do you want to waste? Last year, they were 20 games under 500, and while this year isn't that bad, it's another year on the outside looking in. The bats never got going. Nolan Arenado is washed. Nolan Gorman is a mess. Jordan Walker looks like a bust. And the pitching wasn't nearly good enough. Sonny Gray is the best they've got. And I think we've now seen that on a contending team, he needs to be the number two or even the number three starter in a rotation. He can't be the SP1. A lot of work ahead for John Mazalek this winter if he keeps his job. The Giants are next. Now, San Francisco wound up being one of the most active teams last winter and took themselves over the luxury tax threshold as a result of it. So a trip to the postseason was a must. That's not going to happen. Webb and Snell were really the only two good pieces in that rotation. And even Snell, when he was out there, was brutal to start the year. Speaking of injuries, they lost Young Hu Lee back in May. And really, outside of Ramos, Fitzgerald, and Chapman, this lineup couldn't produce. 
the Jorge Soler deal was a mistake, and thankfully Alex Anthopoulos came along and Farhan was able to get out of that. But the Giants have a lot of work to do in the offseason to reach the level that the Padres and Diamondbacks are at to even hope to grab a wild card spot in 2025. Lastly, we can't forget about the Atlanta Braves, a Braves team that could still make the playoffs and make a World Series run, but this 2024 season has fallen far short of the expectations, and it's not the performance on the field. This is more about the injuries that have decimated the hopes of competing for the top spot in the National League and making that World Series run. They're now fighting with just a couple of weeks left in the season to grab the final wild card spot in the National League. Losing Acuna and Strider for the entire season and then seeing Albies, Riley, and Lopez go down have all contributed to a Braves team that is falling well short of expectations. Those are some of my biggest disappointing players and teams from 2024. Feel free to comment down below with yours because I know there are more than just what I have outlined in this video. And disappointment is a relative term. What's disappointing to you may be different from what's disappointing to me. So feel free again, comment down below. Let me and the rest of the community know about the players or teams that have disappointed you the most. That is going to do it for this one, everybody. I do appreciate you coming in. Ball Cap Nation, I salute you. Made it all the way to the end, and that does amazing things for the algorithm. So thank you. I'm out of here, everybody. But I want you to remember, as always, if it's low, let it go. And if it's high, let it fly. I'll catch you next time.